and welcome to this sample lecture from the Media and Communications degree at Surrey. My name is Christine Hine and I'll be talking about analysing digital media and particularly how to read an app. Now starting from the very beginning, we're studying the media because we think media reflects society, because we think media influences society. Fundamentally, we, we we think that media and communications are really important social phenomena. But the mechanism by which media either reflect or influence society are not straightforward. And when we do research in media and communications, we're trying to explore some aspect of how this relationship between media and society happens. Each research method we use gives a, di a different lens to view the media through. And the methods that we use are continually having to adapt in order to study emerging media forms. And particularly the emergence of digital media has been a great uh, challenge and a great boost to the development of research methods. So I will be talking here about how we analyse apps. And apps are a very important, significant development in terms of our use of digital media and communications in our everyday lives. So an app is designed to help us to perform specific activities and it will steer us to do that in a particular way. And it could be said that the app that we're using is helping to shape our experience of everyday life. So apps have become quite quickly embedded, taken for granted ways of doing things but it's important for media researchers that we look closely at what kind of ways the apps might be shaping our experience of everyday life and what directions they might be steering us in. So we'll be using a method called the walkthrough method developed by uh, Leighton, Burgess and Duguay in 2018. And this is a method that helps to step us through closely and systematically examining how the app shapes user experience. And so this is one of the methods that we explore on the media and communications degree in the second year, analysing media and digital communications module. So the app walkthrough has two key stages. And in the first stage, we're looking at the environment of expected use, which is how the app is positioned for us and how the app is positioned as a business. So the first aspect of this is the vision of the app and how do users get an idea of what an app is going to do for them? How does it shape our expectations? And here we need to be looking at the marketing, the advertisements for an app, the reviews that it gets, and we need to look at the way that the app store promotes it to us. So before we've even started using an app, we will have, by these kind of um, influences, started to get an idea about um, what kind of things we should expect it to do for us, but also we get a, an, an Im impression of um, what kind of people use this app, possibly. We get a sense of how it might fit in with our specific goals and identities and, and ideas of what we want to do. So there has to be some kind of alignment with us at that moment where we believe this app is for us. And these kind of prior materials help us to get to that point. But then behind the scenes, there's the operating model, the way that the app works as a business. And each app has its, has its way of uh, making money. And that might be through subscriptions where we actually pay to use an app or where we make in-app purchases. And that model um, suggests specific things about the way that the app is, first of all, um, uh, positioned to lure us in, but also then following up from that, how it is trying to keep us uh, paying our subscriptions, keep us on board, maintain the experience or maintain a relationship. The other key way that apps work as a business could be if it's a free to use app, then that implies that the um, developers are possibly gaining revenue either from advertising that will be personalised towards us 
or by selling on our data, by capturing data. And this, again, has implications for the way the app is designed to uh, capture our interest, maintain our interest, and um, to maximise the, the data that is given off in our interactions with it. So various aspects of the way that it works as a business have implications for the design of an app and for the way it will, will be presented to us. And then finally, sitting in the background are also the, the regulation and governance of an app. So the kind of terms and conditions that will be there in the small print that are presented to us and that have to comply with uh, national and international regulations about how data is collected and used, what kind of consent it is expected from users. So there is a lot sitting prior to our actual use of an app. So I would suggest that at this moment you might want to pause this lecture, um, get your phone out, open up the App Store and then start to look at the different ways that various apps are presented to you. Look at the um, the user reviews that you can access, look at the way that the star ratings give you a different set of expectations and think about how different users might then make use of that kind of material to shape their expectations about the app. OK, so when we've done that, we then move on to stage two of the walkthrough method, which is the actual technical walkthrough. And in this stage, we are going to start using the app as an ordinary user would, but we are going to very closely attend to both the way that the app is designed to steer us through sets of activities, but we will also be looking at the kind of message that the look and feel of an app gives to us. So if any of you have done any semiotic analysis, we'll be using those same kinds of um, sensitivities to think about what connotations the different kinds of presentation have. So the walkthrough, exactly that. We start off with registration and entry. We look carefully at what does the app need to know about us? What kind of questions are we asked? What kind of data do we have to give it straight away? Then look at what kind of guidance we're given on how to use it. What kind of steering we get through the different activities we have to go on with. And then we start to follow that up with everyday use. What does the everyday user actually do with the app? What's it guiding us towards? What is it limiting us from doing? And what we will start to find is that some activities, the preferred activities, we could say, are really easy to do with an app, whereas the less preferred activities might be hidden in subsidiary screens or they might be low down the list of drop down um, options. We might have to search and seek for them. So we need to try and think when we're doing this walkthrough, what is the preferred way of using this app? And what does that then suggest about who the preferred user of this app is and how will they relate to it? And then we complete the technical walkthrough by suspending, closing and leaving the app. And here we can reflect very carefully on whether the app attempts to maintain usage. Does it attempt to keep our data? Does it try and keep a, a relationship by reminding us, asking us where we've gone? How easy is it to close and leave the app or to delete it altogether? So in the technical walkthrough, we go through the whole span of the relationship that an everyday user might have with the app, asking how it builds a preferred way of going about that everyday experience that it's helping us to perform. So the kind of things that we might be looking at are sequences. What's the prominent next step? What is it? most easy to do next and therefore how are we being steered? What are the compulsory fields, the things that have to be known about us for us to use an app? How do pop-ups get used to attract our attention and steer us in particular ways? How does the ordering of the drop-down menu or the list of the available categories actually frame our understanding of 
the experience that we are being offered. And then finally, the look and feel of the app, including the branding and the colours and the fonts, so that we can almost say without looking closely at even the text sometimes, what kind of app this is? Is this a shopping app? Is this a fitness tracking app? How is it giving us a feeling of um, vibrancy or calm? Or how is it looking um, official and clinical? Or how is it looking um, vibrant and um, appealing? So we can look at all of those factors when we do the walkthrough. And so taking all of those together, they start to enable us to ask this question about how are apps reframing and reshaping our everyday experiences. So again, I'd suggest to you quite strongly at this stage, pause the lecture, go to, uh, maybe go to a new app, maybe rather than one that you're completely familiar with, and go through those stages and think about how that app is shaping your experience of this everyday activity that it's offering to help you do. So this kind of method is embedded in um, lots of different research projects that we might do. So um, within the sociology department at Surrey, um, we've had student dissertations using this kind of method. We have doctoral um, researchers doing this kind of research and um, members of staff colleagues doing research on things like if we look at a fitness app, is that steering us towards a particular way of understanding what health is and who's responsible for it? If we look at sleep tracking apps, might they be affecting the way that we actually think about what sleep is and whose responsibility is that we slept? Or um, something like hookup apps, um, Tinder and the like. How do they portray intimacy and relationships? How are they shaping what we think of as an intimate relationship? Or mental health support apps. How do they portray mental health and how do they offer a prospect of recovering from mental health? So these are the kind of research projects that we can do once we have this, this method for systematically examining an app. And taking all of those together, we can start to ask whether apps are part of a shift maybe towards individualised responsibilities for health and fitness and relationships. So maybe they are part of a trend where we are being asked to take personal responsibility through our phone for these aspects of our, our existence. And we can also start to ask, what does this do for diversity? And are there ways in which the, the app is silencing particular voices or ignoring choices that might, might otherwise seem valid because of the way that it is steering us through a programmed set of preferred steps to achieve the experience? So these are the kind of research um, big questions that we can start to um, explore once we have these systematic methods. And as I said, research methods are going to keep evolving as digital media evolve, as um, media and communications landscapes change. It's going to be really important that we keep on developing these research methods that help us ask the important questions of the day. Thank you.